Hi, I'm Adrian Scott and I want to show you some basics of analog synthesis using the Roland Gaia. To start with, I'd like to point out that all musical sounds are made up of three components. We've got pitch, we've got tone, and we've got volume. Let's look at the Gaia. First thing you'll notice is that the Gaia is laid out in three separate sections. The first section is the pitch section, then the tone section, then the volume section. Of course, they're called something else, but that's not quite as important as getting into the music at the moment. So, for example, just to prove my point, if I play a note and go straight to the first dial in the pitch section, you can see that immediately that it is the pitch section. Same with the tone section, the first dial. Adjust the tone of the sound. First dial in the volume section. Adjust the volume. The volume is actually called amp for amplifier, which makes sense, it's much like your stereo at home. But you'll notice straight away that there are four other sliders in the volume section or amp section. They're called the envelope, and they basically create the shape of the sound. So for example, this first one involves the beginning of the note. When I hit the note at the moment, it has an instant sound we call instant attack. If I raise the attack, raise it again, slower again. So now you understand the beginning of the sound. The last control is called release. When I release the note, it's instant at the moment. With a longer release, it fades away, as you can see. The middle two controls. Well, first of all, the third one. The third one is really just another volume control. We call it sustain because it is what happens while I sustain the note? How loud will this note be while I'm sustaining it? So we call it sustain. The second one's called decay. Now decay means what happens after you hit the note until the volume gets to that sustain level, like this. And you can hear the, the sound decay away until it reaches the sustain level. So now you can understand what the shape of the sound is. Let's put this to a basic position again. Now you have to bear in mind that this is a synthesizer. It's meant to sound like a synthesizer. But sometimes in order to explain how to create sounds, it's easier to use an acoustic analogy. So for example, what sort of acoustic instrument does this sound like? Let me take it down an octave. It's sort of like a brass instrument. Sort of. So let's try and aim for a brass instrument. Maybe a trumpet. First of all, let's play a trumpet phrase. What's wrong with this trumpet? Well, the first thing that's wrong with it is the pitch. It's too low. It should be an octave higher, I think. And we know where to go. You go straight to the pitch section and turn it up. A bit better. But now what's wrong with our trumpet sound? Well, to begin with, it sounds like we're hitting the trumpet, and we don't hit a trumpet, we blow a trumpet. So we have to make the beginning of the sound a puffing sound. Let's shut all the envelope. And I'll raise the attack slider until it starts to puff. About there. Now I'll give it a bit of decay as well, just for some length to this puff sound. Okay. Sort of like a staccato trumpet, but I can't play a long note because there's no sustain, so I should raise the sustain. But remember, if I put it all the way to the top, the decay has no effect. So I'm going to put it about 90%, about there. Now if you listen closely, when I let go each note, it's a little thump because the release is too sudden. I don't want a long release like this. It doesn't sound anything like a trumpet. I've got to find something in the middle that doesn't thump and doesn't release too slowly. Now we're getting our trumpet. What's wrong with our trumpet now? Well, we've got the shape of the volume correct, but the tone isn't changing. Now you can see that the shape controls that I have in the volume section are also repeated over here in the tone section. So maybe I should be copying those controls over to that. And that's what I'll do. Just as close as I can, not being too fussy, because 
it really didn't make any difference. And that's where I need to explain this tone control here. This whole section is really not called tone, it's called filter. It's not like your stereo at home. With your stereo, you take the bass notes, you turn them up, you turn them down. You take the treble notes, you turn them up, you turn them down. But basically they all stay there. With a synthesizer, we have a filter, which is rather like chemistry, where you take the particles out of a fluid by passing it through a filter. With sound, basically, it starts at the high end, above the treble notes, and brings it down slowly and wipes out the sound by going across. So, for example, if I play this note and lower the filter, you'll basically hear the treble disappear, then the middles disappear, then the bass disappear, and everything is gone. You wipe out the sound. So it's quite different. So what I need to do is really turn the filter right off, like this. But now we have no sound at all. And why is that? That's because of this one last slider in the filter section, which tells me how much effect the envelope has on the tone. And if I raise this slider slowly, it has more and more effect. Of course, if I go right to the top again, there is no decay, there's no effort to go. So I'll bring it down till I can just hear the decay. There. Much better. But now what's wrong with our trumpet? Well, it's too static. A trumpet player would normally add some vibrato. So we can go to this vibrato section over here. Of course, it's not called vibrato section, but we'll just treat it as such at the moment. So I raise the vibrato. Okay, there are three things wrong with that. The first thing, of course, is it's too wide, but I'll leave it wide for the moment. Because I would like to point out that to me, it's also a bit slow. I've got control of the speed here. I prefer it about there. The third thing that's wrong with it is it's instant. A trumpet player would normally blow the note, then introduce some vibrato. So I raise this slider called the fade time. And the vibrato fades in. I like it at about four. Now I can bring down the width. Not bad. Just out of interest though, let's turn that off because what I'm doing here is sending the vibrato to the pitch section, but I can also send it to the tone section and I can also send it to the volume. If I send it to the volume, what do I get? I get tremolo. And in fact, a little bit of tremolo for an acoustic instrument makes sense. So I'll just leave a little bit there. What if I send it to the filter? I get a sort of wire effect. And once again, a little bit of wire actually works for an acoustic instrument. But I like that upside down. Now put the vibrato back in. And we've got quite a natural trumpet vibrato. Add some reverb. And it's pretty close. 